Hi all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jamie and today I'm going to talk about some everyday items that you might not know have plastic in them and some ideas of how you can lessen your plastic intake. I'm not trying to fill up my plastic, but I just don't want to eat it, you know? I wasn't gonna film this video right now, I was about to work out, but the construction outside stopped for a second. So uh, we're gonna do this real quick. Coffee. That's better. All right, the first item that you might not know contains plastic is your chewing gum. Gum contains polyethylene, which is the plastic that's used in a lot of children's toys, and other kinds will contain, how do you say it? Polyvinyl acetate. Um, and that's one of the ingredients is in those like purple glue sticks you used in elementary school. Unfortunately, manufacturers don't have to tell you what plastics they're using and how much they're using. They just label it as like gum base on the ingredient labels. So there's not really any way to know what you're chewing on. And it's a myth that your gum is going to stay in your intestines for like seven years or whatever we would always say. But I will say that because there's plastic in it, it's not going to dissolve. So the way it goes in is going to be the same way it goes out. Besides the possibility of ingesting it, um, there are a lot of environmental concerns, especially since, you know, we see gum on sidewalks and on railings. I couldn't think of the word. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, we need this today. In the UK, they spend about 60 million pounds a year removing gum from sidewalks and other places. Why can't I think of where we put gum? Railings, I feel like that's it. And I don't really know where it all goes, but I will say, again, it doesn't dissolve anywhere, so it's probably in landfill, actually, hopefully in landfill and not in the oceans. And unfortunately, in Canada and the US, we don't have a big government program that's cleaning up all the gum, it's gonna fall on small business owners. So there is natural biodegradable gum out there if you are a big gum person and maybe you wanna switch to that. Otherwise, I'll just say, when you're done with a piece of gum, please throw it in the trash bin, don't just dump it on the sidewalk. All right, number two, foil. A lot of snack packages and other packages look like metal. They're all shiny, but they're actually metalized plastic, which means that you can't recycle them. If you're unsure if the material you have is foil or metalized plastic, um, just scrunch it up. And if it stays put, if it stays in a little ball, it means it's foil and can eventually be recycled once you have a big enough ball of it. And if it expands, then that means it's plastic and it's gotta go in the trash. Number three is tea bags. Lots of major tea brands use tea bags that have plastic in it. So when you put it in your mug and you put boiling water in it, then the water is gonna heat the plastic and it's gonna leach into your cup and you're gonna drink the plastic, which doesn't sound good to me. So I'm not a big fan of that, that's just me. So do your research and look for tea bags that are fully compostable. And even if you don't have a compost, I feel like it's still better to get the totally compostable kind or biodegradable. Although biodegradable is not a regulated term. Get the compostable tea bags um, because that means you won't be, you know, ingesting plastic. Another option with even less waste, if you're interested, is to use loose leaf teas. Number four is glitter. <laughs> glitter is literally plastic, it's just plastic. Glitter is under five millimeters, so it's considered a microplastic, and they're so small that they get everywhere. You know that, they get everywhere. <sighs> I'm a theater kid, I had to dance. It gets everywhere. Glitter easily contaminates our environment because it's so small and it ends up in animals' digestive tracts, and you know, it works your way up the food chain, and oftentimes it ends up in our digestive tracts. The animals often eat it, and if they fill up on glitter, then their body thinks they're full, but they're not actually getting any nutrients, so a lot of times it ends up killing them prematurely, which is really sad. 
So if you really like glitter, there are some kinds that use mica instead, which is a natural resource. Although I will also say that mica is often not sourced ethically. So if you don't need glitter, I guess I would say don't use it, but I don't know, just be conscious about it. That's about, that's about all you can do. There's no great answer to glitter. All right, number five is clothes. Yes, your fleece, your polyester, your rayon, your spandex, all plastic. Every time you wash them, they shed microplastics that end up in the ocean. And then animals eat the plastic and then bigger animals eat those animals and so on. And then we end up with plastic in our bodies. There's a, there's a theme, there's a theme to this. So one tip is to look for natural fibers when you're shopping like cotton and linen. And if you already do have synthetic fibers in your closet, which honestly chances are you do, I do. There are products that you can use when you're washing your clothes that help collect the microplastics so that they don't end up in the waterways like the Guppy Friend bag, bag, bag or bag, bag. It sounds wrong both ways. I'll link it below. And Cora balls. And then I know there are also filters that you can buy just to attach directly to your washing machine and those gather them as well. And then obviously when you get the gathered plastics, put them in the trash, in the trash, no water, trash. Another biggie is your paper cups. So yes, your Starbucks cup has plastic on the inside. It makes sense, otherwise the paper would just get super soggy anytime you put anything liquid in there. Because they're mixed materials, cups like this can't go in the recycling because our facilities don't have the capacity to separate the plastic from the paper or cardboard, so they gotta go in the trash. So I'm just gonna suggest a reusable travel mug if you're getting coffee to go, or make coffee at home and use your own beautiful mug. Even if you make coffee like once a week, that's something. You're keeping one more cup out of the landfill. Yay. Number seven, receipts. A recent study found that about nine in 10 receipts contain plastic, more specifically BPA, which is biphenol A, I think. Is that what it's called? Uh, bisphenol. Bisphenol A or um, bisphenol S, BPS. They're chemical cousins. They contain BPA or BPS. It's been taken out of a lot of plastic water bottles. It's like banned from baby products. Um, but yeah, it's in all of our receipts. And another downside is that you can't recycle them. Don't put your receipts in the recycling bin. They're not normal paper. Don't do it. Trash bin, trash bin. So if a store offers like an email receipt, I recommend doing that. Or you can just refuse a receipt if you don't want to touch it. Otherwise, if there's a place that you frequent, I think it's a great idea to email that company and say, hey, would you consider changing your receipt paper to one without BPA? I think like Trader Joe's started doing that recently. So companies listen and phone died. All right, we're back. What was I saying? It's on companies to create better products and use better materials. It's not our fault that the world isn't more sustainable. But yeah, if there's a company you like and you want them to use receipts without BPA, let them know. Companies want to know what you like and what you want. Number eight is cigarette butts. I'm going to start this one off by reading from National Geographic because they know more than I do. So this article says that smokers around the world buy roughly 6.5 trillion cigarettes each year. That's 18 billion every day. While most of the cigarettes innards and paper wrapping disintegrate when smoke, not everything gets burned. Trillions of cigarette filters, also known as butts or ends, are left over, only an estimated third of which make it into the trash. The rest are casually flung into the street or out a window. Cigarette filters are made of a plastic called cellulose acetate. When tossed into the environment, they dump not only that plastic, but also the nicotine, heavy metals, and many other chemicals they've absorbed into the surrounding environment. So discarded cigarette butts can harm wildlife if ingested. They also hinder plant growth, and obviously, again, not great for our waterways. If you do smoke, just put it in the bin so it doesn't end up in the environment. Also, if you use e-cigarettes, again, I'm not like promoting this, I just know that people use them. There are some that are recyclable, so 
maybe use those. Up next is contacts. Contacts are made of silicone hydrogel, which is a type of soft plastic, and they are recyclable, which is great. But I have seen people just take them out of their eyes and plop them in the recycling bin, which is not how it works. I appreciate you trying though. If contacts aren't disposed properly, again, they'll end up in waterways, and because they're uh, like denser than water, they'll sink to the bottom of our oceans and then bottom feeders will eat it. But I wear contacts and I'm not gonna tell you not to wear contacts. That would be ridiculous. Wear your contacts. Again, they are recyclable though, but you can't put them in your home recycling because they're too small and they won't get properly recycled. But Bausch and Lum and TerraCycle have created a recycling program and it doesn't matter what brand or what kind of contacts you use. Um, I'll link below. They have a site where you can type in where you live and figure out what uh, center is closest to you. And I think if you're not near a center, you can also mail it to them. Um, but they take contacts, they take the empty blister packs, and they also accept the foil that covers them. So that's super cool. Last but not least is your drinking water. Yeah, I mean, plastic is in all these things, many more things, and microplastics are getting into water all the time. So kind of unavoidable. I don't really have a, there's no great solution to not ingesting plastic in your water. Um, I have heard that drinking bottled water, like in a plastic bottle, uh, you are getting about twice as many microplastics in your body. So I guess if you can use tap water, that's better. But I understand also that tap water is not safe to drink everywhere. So this is more, I guess, of just a letting you know kind of a thing. Less of a, here's the 100% correct, perfect solution. Because there's one. Wow, that ended on kind of a bummer note. Plastic's everywhere. And again, I'm not trying to vilify plastic. It's not like the devil. It's very useful and economic and helpful in so many different ways. I'm just here to let you know that there are some alternatives and also proper ways of uh, disposing plastic. So that's it for today. If you have any questions, let me know. Please be sure to hit the like button if you found this useful and valuable. It really helps me out. And subscribe if you haven't. All right, I'm gonna go work out now. Bye.